Welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited about this video because I recently hit my weight loss goal. Ah! And I wanted to come on here and just reflect on the last three months, share with you guys where my mindset is and how I lost the weight, of course, and just to give some motivation and inspiration for anyone who is currently on a journey. Before we get into all of that, I just wanted to give a quick trigger warning. In this video, we're gonna be talking about weight, numbers, scales, and if any of those topics are triggering to you, please click out this video, come back at a later time, take care of yourself, and come back when you're ready to or save this for later. I know that we're not always in the season of like losing weight and this isn't always everyone's journey. So don't feel as though you need to watch and listen to this right now. At the end of the day, I just want you to take care of yourself, take care of your mental health and come back whenever you are ready. So recently I have lost just around 20 pounds. At my heaviest this past summer, I was sitting around like 154, 155. I am currently at 134 as of today, which is right under my goal. My goal is 135. When it comes to weight, this past year has been so hard. I have lost five pounds here, gained five pounds here, lost five pounds here, gained it back here, and it's just been really hard for me to just be disciplined and stick to a meal plan, stick to a workout plan, and just I don't know, it's just been really hard for me to stay disciplined and consistent throughout the year. I finally come to a place where I am one, okay, fixing my relationship with food and two, putting my health first. About a year and a half ago, I got married and right before my wedding, I lost 10 pounds. And then after my wedding, I lost an additional like 15 maybe or maybe it was like a total of 15 pounds, I forget. Around that time is where I like really buckled down and lost weight for the wedding. Conveniently, the wedding was in March, like I just said, it was right before the summer, and I just felt so confident going into my wedding and extra confident going into the summer that year. But then shortly after the summer ended, the fall and winter came, okay? Basically last fall and winter were not my friends. It just was not a great time for me. I just kind of started to fall off of like the habits I had built for myself. And there are several reasons why I feel as though I fell off heavily. One was because of my job. At the time, I was working at a bank. The amount of food that they gave us, purchased for us, served us, on a weekly basis was crazy. Every Friday, someone was bringing in donuts, pig in the blanket, coffee, pizza, wing stop. Like someone was always feeding us there. And it was really, really, really hard for me to keep healthy habits while I was working at my last job. It was just so hard, especially because I wasn't really good when it came to self-control. So that setting was just not great for me at all. Like I appreciate free food, like I love free food, but like, eating Wingstop at 11 a.m. on a random Friday is just like not, it's just not it. And I've never had issues like this because when I was a teacher, no one ever bought us food. When I was a teacher, nine times out of 10, if I didn't bring my food, I wasn't eating. So that was that. And they never bought us food like that. Like we would get a pizza party maybe once, <laughs> once in the whole school year. I was also a cheer coach, so I stayed pretty active when I was in education, so I never really worried too much about weight gain. It wasn't until I started working at the bank is when I started gaining weight, which was basically this time last year. And that coupled with the holidays and just holiday treats and just comfort food in general just made me gain all the weight that I had lost around the wedding and right before the summer of 2022. like. Yeah, that it was end game basically. Everything was over from there. At the beginning of last year, I made it a goal to lose weight. And as the year went on, I would find myself, you know, losing a couple of pounds, but I would gain it right back really quickly. I didn't really have great control over like my sugar tube, drinking. And the thing is that's so crazy is once I quit my job at the bank, it didn't get better. Nothing got better. What I thought would happen is that I would quit my job at the bank start working for myself, eat healthier, and just move forward. But that did not happen. 
my habits just stayed the same. What made me decide to take a step back and just try to lose the weight was I was dealing with a lot of joint issues. I was dealing with horrible knee pain, especially when I worked out and I was dealing with really bad back pain, lower back pain to be specific. Now that I've lost the weight, I'm not dealing with those issues. Number two, I was dealing with severe skin issues. I have eczema. I've always had eczema. It's always been something that I struggle with. However, my eczema was 10 times worse because of my diet. I was having flare-ups in places where I just wasn't used to having flare-ups like on my shins, in between my legs, on my, well, I was used to having them here, but they were just everywhere. Like my hands, I'm still dealing with like the scarring from it, but none of these are active. They're all just kind of, you know, scars. Unfortunately, I have these scars on my hand and I hate that, but it is what it is. I was having the weirdest flare ups and it was definitely because of my diet. Number three, pre-diabetes was something I was dealing with. And the thing is, if you're pre-diabetic, you gotta get everything under control so you don't hit the actual diabetes. We got that under control, thankfully. And number four were my energy levels. Energy levels were crap super tired. I would get home and just need a nap just from existing. So I like my energy levels were in the gutter. So let's talk about the first five pounds that I lost. Losing the first five pounds was probably the easiest thing ever. I grew up in the South. I grew up in Dallas, Texas, and I currently live in Austin, Texas. These are all cities that are all like very like foodie cities. A lot of your social activities revolve around food out here, especially in the South. My mom and my sister went to Paris. My sister just recently moved out there. We were helping her move. When we went to Paris, I literally was so hungry. <laughs> Every single time we sat down to eat somewhere, there was just nothing that was appealing to me and that was a red flag right there. I would look at the menu and there would just be like eggplant and <laughs> squash. I would get salads, I would get healthy things, but honestly, I was like dying on the inside. I wanted some pasta, I wanted a burger, I wanted something hearty, but I was very much forced to just like change my mindset when I was out there. But one thing that I did notice was the difference between like the grocery stores out there and their like convenience stores as it compared to here in the United States. Whenever you go into a grocery store here in the United States, the things that are thrown in your face are junk food almost immediately. It's baked goods, it's chips, it's candy, like all that stuff is thrown in your face when you walk into a grocery store, when you walk into gas stations, everywhere here. It's really crazy. And when you're in other places around the world, you notice that that's just not the same experience that they have. Kind of put a lot into perspective for me. It really made me realize how much I associate food with comfort. And I feel like if you're someone who's struggling with a crazy sweet tooth, if you're just a heavy snacker, I, and you live in the United States, I just wanna let you know, it is not your fault. You are literally a product of your environment. Honestly, we are victims of our environment, basically. We're victims of our circumstances, and it really does suck whenever we want to do better, but it's just, what we're fed and what we see on a daily basis when it comes to media is just food, 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 specifically snacks, like snacks, junk food, pizza, commercials, all that stuff. It's not your fault. I was very much forced out of my comfort zone when it came to food and we walked over 10,000 steps a day, which was really strenuous on me at first. But then after a while, like I got used to it. I was really excited about it. And before I knew it, when I got back home, I lost five pounds. And I was super excited because I was like, dang, like that was quick. I lost five pounds in literally six days. Like that is so cool. It inspired me to not only eat healthier, but it inspired me to try to walk more because I didn't work out for a week straight. All I did was walk. All I did was increase my steps. It was just really inspiring for me to just have seen those changes just from walking <laughs> and obviously not eating super trash food. Once I got back, my goal was to make sure that I was increasing my steps more times than not. So 10K steps was my goal all the time. I was going downtown, which is crazy because I have an irrational fear of getting kidnapped. 
And the fact that I was literally going downtown and walking 10K steps by myself is crazy, okay? I just can't believe it. I wish I could do it more often, but the weather has just been trash lately. I would literally walk the whole Congress Strip at times. So I would walk from the Congress Bridge all the way down to the Capitol. If you're from Austin, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, I would do this by myself, which is crazy. I would walk from Trader Joe's all the way to Congress Bridge, back to Trader Joe's, grocery shop, and then head home. And I was averaging out around like three to four miles, at least like three times a week. So I started off walking like crazy and it was so fun for me. I would just put my headphones on and just walk. I would take pictures. I'd send them to Michael and be like, at the Capitol, <laughs> downtown. <laughs> And he'd be like, be careful. But yeah, it was so fun to me to just get my steps up and just be outside. And that was when the weather was getting really nice because it was September. So that was really, really great. So I just want to say this. We are very, very sedentary, especially those of us who live in the dirty South. Okay, we live very sedentary lives. We are not moving enough. We're not walking enough. I just wanna start off by saying that 10,000 steps a day can change your life. We are way too sedentary here in the United States, especially us who live in the dirty, dirty South. 10,000 steps a day can change you. If that is your only goal to start off with. That is an amazing goal to start off with. I also, coupled that with eating in a calorie deficit. But the thing is guys, I have tried to be in a calorie deficit several times this year. It never worked, okay, it never worked. This time, however, because I was focusing in on only walking, and these were low intensity workouts for me, and at the time I was doing Pilates twice a week, Again, low intensity workouts. It was just so much easier for me to focus in on being in a calorie deficit while doing low intensity workouts. It just was so easy for me to just focus in on my diet and focus in on the things that were going to make me successful. Because time and time again, time and time again, every single time I tried to do this, I would try to have this crazy workout split where I was going to spin and I was going to Pilates and I was weightlifting and I was running. I was running a lot. I was trying to become a runner and running made me so hungry and it was very, very hard for me to control my cravings, especially because I didn't have a good grasp on food at that time. Totally ditched running. Running's just gonna have to be on my 2024 goals list. The only way I was able to get here was to not put my body under a lot of stress and was to just chill out basically when it came to my weight loss goals. Walking 10,000 steps, even if it was on the treadmill, if it was outside, great, but a lot of times it was on the treadmill. And then Pilates twice a week, that's how I started. That is literally how I started. And before I knew it, the weight was just falling off. I have done this several times, okay? I have been on these journeys several times. And in the beginning, when I was first learning about weighing out my food and stuff like that, I used the app MyFitnessPal, which I love MyFitnessPal. I've actually worked with them in the past, which is really cool. I worked with them in 2022, I think, yeah. I worked with them like shortly after my wedding, which was really cool. This is an app I've been using since college, okay? College. MyFitnessPal is an amazing app if you don't really know how to weigh your food or how much of each food group that you need to be consuming every day. The app is a perfect way to start. You put in your current weight, you put in your height, you tell them like, what your goals are, whether it's weight loss, whether it's weight gain. They give you a certain amount of calories and macros that you're going to have to consume every single day to hit your goal. It is basically science, guys. It's math, okay? Is it math? No, it's science. <laughs> it's food science, guys, okay? You're only going to be able to hit your goals if you are in a calorie deficit, okay? Especially when it comes to weight loss. If weight loss is your goal, you have to be in a calorie deficit. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you like you can eat whatever you want, especially if you have a body type where that's just not possible. Ugh, I just hate seeing the content creators who preach eating whatever you want because that's not everyone's experience, unfortunately. Be careful with what you consume on this internet, guys. Be 
careful. I myself used to think that I could eat whatever I want and still lose weight as long as I worked out super hard, as long as I ran, I did hit workouts, I did this, that, and this. First of all, that is not everyone's experience. Second of all, you change so much as you age. I used to be able to come on here and say, yeah, like I'm not that strict with my diet. Like <laughs> I can do a couple of hit workouts every week and then lose weight. And that was my experience up until I was maybe 25. When I was 25, I could eat whatever and work out super hard and not gain a lot of weight. But as soon as I hit my late 20s, things changed. Things changed, honey. Okay, I could no longer outwork a bad diet. Now that I'm 30 years old, it's gotten even worse. I have to be way more cautious with what I'm putting in my mouth. Yeah, do not let these influencers try to tell you that you can eat whatever you want and still lose weight. That's just not everyone's experience, and it's okay for that not to be your experience, but don't fall for that hype, okay? Do not. Weighing food can be really triggering for a lot of people. It can cause a lot of anxiety for a lot of people. It's just not a fun experience for a lot of people. If you have never counted your macros, if you've never weighed out your food, and you just have no idea how to get yourself in a calorie deficit, I would highly recommend just trying it out for two weeks. It is so easy to learn what is working and what's not working just based off of two weeks, okay? I used to weigh out my food heavily in college. I would weigh out my food, I would portion out my food. So I used to do this so much back in the day that I have a grasp and knowledge on like what my body considers a calorie deficit. Very, very rarely weigh out my food now. Like last night, I wanna say I measured out some rice just because with rice and stuff, you know, I, I like to measure out my rice just because I'd be heavy handed with the rice, okay? I grew up eating rice. Can't be heavy handed with the rice when you're trying to be in a calorie deficit. So whenever I'm eating things like rice and pasta, I really do try to like portion it out. But other than that, I'm pretty like good with measuring by hand. I highly recommend downloading my fitness pal app, playing around with the app and trying to go on a journey to getting into a calorie deficit. Because it's not just about eating less, and I think a lot of people think it's just like, eat less and you'll be able to lose weight. It's not only about eating less. Honestly, there are times where I eat a lot. You can eat high volume foods and still be in a calorie deficit. It just depends on what you are putting in your meal and what you are essentially putting into your body. Um, it's not all about eating less. I just wanna say that. Another thing that was keeping me stuck was my sweet tooth. And I talked a little bit about this in one of my recent videos. I got a lot of questions about how I was able to cut my sugar addiction, cut the sugar addiction for good. I slowly weaned myself off of sugar. The first thing I did was cut all uh, the first thing I did was cut out a lot of the sugary drinks. Those sugary drinks from these coffee spots, guys, are so bad. Actually, one of you commented on one of my recent videos. So anyway, I can't find the comment. I'll put it right here if I can find it. But one of you commented on one of my recent videos, basically saying that you're a barista and the amount of like sugar and simple syrup and all of the bad stuff that they put in the coffees that we drink is crazy and she's like basically everyone needs to be drinking that stuff in moderation not every day at all and the thing is i used to drink that stuff almost every single day and yes i would substitute the milk for almond milk and do oat milk you know they were still pumping it with vanilla pumping it with caramel sauce whatever it was sugar cookie lattes pumpkin spice lattes, those have just so much sugar. It's not great for every day. It's maybe good like once a week. And I'm not talking about coffee. Coffee in general isn't horrible for you, but um, I'm talking about the coffees that have like a lot of syrup and sugar and all of that stuff. Also, one thing that I started doing was replacing really sugary treats with great alternatives or better alternatives. So I love cookies. I love a good sweet cookie, okay? I love a chocolate chip cookie, sugar cookie, whatever it is. And instead of getting like Nestle Toll House cookies, I was substituting that for like Sweet Lorenz cookies. I would just substitute like really, really sugar-filled treats with things that didn't have as much sugar 
One thing that saved my butt was Olipops, okay, I have one waiting for me in the fridge, or poppies, poppies are great too. Any gut health soda, oh my gosh, those are so great at helping you curb your sugar craving, guys. I mean, the ones that I get only have around like two grams of sugar, or three grams of sugar. Compared to eating like a cookie with like 27 grams of sugar, I mean, it's a huge difference, guys. So those gut health sodas are amazing. They are amazing for helping you curb your cravings. Number three is just not buying stuff, not having it in the house. You can still have a sweet treat every once in a while, but just keep it out of the house. Maybe limit it to dessert. Um, while you are out eating with your significant other or with friends and stuff, treat yourself to dessert, treat yourself to whatever outside of the house. Don't keep the stuff in the house if it's going to lead you to binging it. Because one thing about me is I really have no self-control. Like if I'm gonna make cookies, I'm gonna make the whole pack of cookies and I'm gonna eat like seven or eight of them. Like I'm gonna eat the whole half by myself and Michael's gonna eat the whole other half by himself. Just not having that stuff here really, really does help. Like one thing that really helped with sugar cravings is just increasing my water intake. I drink half a gallon of water every single day, sometimes more than that, but I don't drink less than half a gallon of water. I drink two Stanleys a day. You know, a lot of times right after my workout in the mornings, I've already finished one full Stanley, and a lot of times before the day is over, I've already finished the second. So a lot of times I will drink two really easily. Sometimes it's harder than others, but water is like my main source of hydration. Olipops, poppies are a nice little treat for me every once in a while, it's not every day. Um, I was drinking them every day at one point, but now I'm not drinking them every day. Um, like I haven't had one all week. I have one waiting for me in the fridge. The hardest thing for everyone is diet. So hard to like curb your cravings and to get onto the other side. But I promise you guys, once you get onto the other side, it's just gonna be so easy like once you get used to just eating foods at home making your own foods eating things that you truly love and just nourishing your body once you get used to how you feel once you're eating better oh my gosh everything is just gonna fall into place much easier getting comfortable in the kitchen is key getting comfortable with making your own meals is key but one thing that's super important to me is making foods that you actually like okay that you actually enjoy that are great for you because i would honestly eat at home if i actually liked the food i was eating and that's not like the issue isn't me just not wanting to cook i don't mind cooking at all it's just that i wasn't loving what i was making now i love what i make and i have a few core core recipes that I stick to, have a few recipes that you can rotate throughout the week. Two to three recipes is key to being successful in this journey. So every once in a while I'll make my ground chicken. Okay, ground chicken. Every once in a while I'll make my little chicken recipe. I've shared it here on my channel. I will also rotate that with some ground turkey and then I'll rotate that with some soup, okay? It just depends on what soup. Sometimes it's turkey chili, sometimes it's vegetable soup, sometimes it's tomato soup, but I will rotate with some type of soup. Always batch cook as much as you can. It doesn't have to last you a full week, but if your meal can last you three days, that's going to be amazing for you. It takes the stress away from you thinking too hard about what you're eating, how you're going to come up with the energy to cook. Make sure you're making it in batches that are going to last you a few days. I showed you guys my favorite chicken recipe. I made it literally yesterday, or the day, no, yeah, yesterday. I made it yesterday, and I'm gonna have it for dinner tonight, I'm gonna have it tomorrow as well. Thursday is Thanksgiving, so I'm gonna eat good on Thanksgiving but I'm just rotating my favorite recipes every other week, basically. I always have my chicken on deck though because you know, the protein is vital. You need to increase your protein intake. A lot of times we are not eating enough protein, okay? And I did a video about this during the summer. Nine times out of 10, most of us are not eating enough protein. That's why I love my little chicken mixture because I eat that chicken like crazy. 
whenever I make it that way and it really helps me hit my protein goals every single day. You should be consuming as much protein as possible during breakfast time. Okay, because what that does is it keeps you fuller for much longer throughout the day. What I used to do is I used to try to intermittent fast and I wouldn't eat a heavy breakfast. I would eat something super light for breakfast and was like, oh yeah, I'm about to lose weight. I'm about to be skinny. But what that would do is it, it would make me really hungry. And then by lunch and dinner, I would just overindulge because I was just starving and I didn't have enough protein throughout the day. That is going to make you fail every single time. So intermittent fasting is great. I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit, but you wanna make sure that that first meal of the day has so much protein, obviously carbs and fats. You wanna make sure that you make it as balanced as possible. So one thing I've been loving doing is two eggs, turkey bacon, toast, obviously spinach, some fruits, whatever it is, and that keeps me full for so long. It keeps me full. I don't have any crazy cravings, any sugar cravings, no nothing, okay? I start the day off strong, basically, and I'm just able to continue throughout the day with great habits. Whenever I skip that meal, and I try to do something maybe like low protein, low carb for breakfast, it's not always great for me at all, okay? Now, not every single breakfast needs to be super heavy, okay? I'm not saying make it heavy, but I'm just saying you need to be hitting your protein, you need to be hitting your carbs, you need to be hitting your fats, okay? It doesn't always have to be a fried egg, okay? Sometimes I do two hard boiled eggs because that's just what I feel comfortable with eating at the moment but yeah. Okay, let's talk about intermittent fasting. I am a huge fan of intermittent fasting. However, I do not intermittent fast every single day. So when it comes to intermittent fasting, you wanna be very, very careful because it can really mess with your hormone levels and it causes people to not honor their hunger cues, which I think that's very irresponsible. You wanna make sure that you are honoring your hunger cues and eating when you are hungry. And I don't recommend doing crazy fasts every single day. I wake up in the morning and I want to eat breakfast at 10, at 11, I'm going to honor that. Because I've realized that if I deprive myself, it's only going to get worse from there. I'm going to want to binge. If I eat a light breakfast, basically, then it's fine. You should not intermittent fast if it doesn't make you feel good at all. And I got a couple of questions on like what my fasting window is. So I love a good 18 hour fast. That's, I mean, I've seen the best results doing an 18 hour fast in a six hour eating window, but that's as far as I will take it. I do not recommend, actually I don't wanna say I don't recommend any other fast, but that's as far as my body can handle. Sometimes I'll do 16, eight, it just depends on how I'm feeling. But again, I won't do it every day. I will not do it every day. And I've noticed that it doesn't really matter how early I eat. What makes the biggest difference is when I cut off at dinner time. Like if I can cut off by like six o'clock and not eat, past six after eating my dinner, oh, I see the best results from doing that. I love intermittent fasting because it's just a great way to push things along, especially if you're dealing with a plateau. Whenever I'm dealing with plateaus, I'll probably fast maybe like two or three times in that week. And I will definitely get past that plateau really quickly from doing that. Highly recommend consulting with your doctor if you're gonna intermittent fast and just do a lot of research on it because it's not for everyone and I would hate for you to just mess with your hormones. I still have to be careful too because I go to the gym, I weight lift, and I don't wanna put myself in a position where I get really like faint or anything like that. What have I cut out of my diet? Okay, let's talk about it. I am currently low sugar, um, very, 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 very low sugar right now. I am consuming minimal dairy, very, very minimal dairy. It's not in my everyday diet anymore, which I'm super proud of because dairy, honestly, guys, whoo, dairy, <laughs> guys, dairy tears your girl's stomach up, okay? And I learned that very quickly. I learned that very quickly because every single time I have dairy, like the other day I had queso, Oh my gosh, the next morning was not pleasant at all, to say the least. So 
very minimal dairy for your girl and I will I don't think I will eat that much queso ever again especially because my stomach is just not used to it anymore um, even on Thanksgiving I think I'm just gonna steer clear from too much dairy because I just I don't want to deal with the repercussions again okay <laughs> I eat a moderate amount of carbs I'm not low carb I'm not keto I'm not doing any of that carbs really do help with my workouts and all that good stuff so I'm pretty moderate with my carbs I'm not gluten free or anything like that honestly just cutting out dairy and a lot of sugar has just changed my gut health in general it has just taken my gut health to the next level and obviously increasing my water intake and obviously decreasing alcohol as well has helped that's all I've done when it comes to my diet and like my eczema has like literally calmed down so much and I could attribute that almost 100% to the dairy and the sugar like I feel like my eczema only flares up when I consume dairy it does like I just don't think it's just great for me and I think I probably have an allergy um, when it comes to dairy products but but guys I will say this I do eat the things that I like to eat okay bless you Mila every once in a while I will still have pizza I will still have burgers I will still have all those things I maybe have a cheat meal at least once a week okay and sometimes it's twice a week you just have to be very strategic with when you're eating and you just have to make better choices more times than not I'm following the 80 20 diet right now when it comes to food and I cook most of my meals at home I'm eating whole foods most of the time but every once in a while especially when the weekend hits I am treating myself especially once the weekend gets here but a lot of times I like to keep it clean throughout the week okay no alcohol focus on drinking a lot of water it helps with your skin too guys cooking my meals at home and then on the weekends I have a good time and we get back to it on Monday you just have to be very disciplined with yourself and you have to get back on track once you get off track okay you just have to trust yourself that you can get back onto it and that's been the biggest difference for me like I can have a really fun weekend but right after the weekend is over it's time to get back to my healthy habits and I honestly am excited to because I don't love the way I feel whenever I do cheat like it's great it's instant gratification it makes me feel happy but the way my body processes it is crazy put a lot of things into perspective for me for sure yeah you know just do what works for you I think it's really important to get down to the bottom of why you eat the foods that you eat and why you find so much comfort in foods that aren't as healthy because that was my issue I just didn't find comfort in vegetables I didn't find as much comfort in fruits I didn't care for them for a long period of time but once I was faced with all of these health issues I just had to make a change and now that I'm in a place where I have so much energy I feel my best I like feel like I have this glow that's just like unstoppable I don't want it to end and I'm really still on this journey of working towards doing better and healing my relationship with food and healing overall because it is a journey it's a healing journey overall I'm gonna be doing a whole video on my fitness journey um, because that's just a whole nother topic I wanted this video to primarily be about food because honestly that's what a lot of us are struggling with most of us do not have an issue when it comes to working out it's the food it's the sugar it's all of that stuff so obviously I'm gonna do another video that's focused on fitness journeys but um, am I only doing low intensity workouts anymore? No, I am weightlifting twice a week in the gym. I'm doing it through Copilot. I have a personal trainer and I've been loving Copilot. And I'm going to talk about this in a whole separate video. So stay tuned. Now that I've lost the weight, one of my big goals is just to tone up for the summer and the spring. I want to be strong because I just feel like I'm just very soft, looking good and lean. However, I'm not as defined as I would like to be but I'm still going back and forth as to whether I want to be just like this lean but strong Pilates princess or if I want to go all out in the gym and start lifting heavier and like building muscle in that way like being like a fit spo and being like really strong in that way I'm just trying to decide what I want 
and what I want to focus on moving forward. I possibly want to lose maybe another five pounds. I would love to be in the 120s, but currently I'm not cutting to lose weight right now. I'm just focusing in on maintaining. We're about to hit the holidays and I just want to maintain this weight and then maybe in January we'll go on another cut. We'll see. I'll keep you guys updated. But the next installment of this video is gonna be talking more about the fitness portion of this all because it's just a huge, huge part in losing weight and stuff. But I hope this was helpful. Thank you guys so much for listening. I know it was really long. I'm gonna try to cut this down so it's maybe like 25 minutes and not like 40 minutes. Cause I talked a lot, but <laughs> yeah guys, let me know if you have any questions down below. I hope this was helpful. I'm rooting for you. I know it can be hard, but you just have to be stronger than your cravings. You have to be stronger than those sugar cravings that creep up in the middle of the night. And yeah guys, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, peace out Girl Scout, bye.